Welcome everyone to another episode of Minecraft. The main goal for this episode is to try and create a working calculator in classic Minecraft. Now this version is long before redstone was added to the game, so how will we make it? The answer is water and gravel. Those two blocks provide all the functionality we need for the calculator. We'll say that if no water has flown into a channel, it's a zero. But if it has flown in, it's a one. We need to create different logic gates that will act as the basic components. Gates give a different output depending on the inputs. First is the OR gate. OR gates output one if either input is one. This is the easiest to build, we just need to converge the two lines together. These two waters are inputs, and this channel right here is the output. If either one of these waters is released, the output will be one. But we have to stop backwash, where one line could flow back to another and change a zero to a one. A simple one block drop will fix this. Second is the AND gate. The AND gate can only output one when both inputs are one. We're going to use gravel to build this gate. We're also using a bug I showed last episode, where gravel won't fall when the water it's on top of is absorbed by a sponge. So if I break this glass right here, we can see we have a floating gravel block. Now what's really useful about this is if water flows into this gravel, it updates it and causes it to fall. This comes at a limitation though. Every time we want to use a floating gravel, we have to keep a sponge underneath it. Breaking the sponge also updates the gravel, causing it to fall. Every sponge we use prevents water two blocks out in each direction, which means that we need to keep a five block distance between each layer when we're stacking gates. Regardless of that limitation, this is the best way to make the AND gate. We can arrange it so that one water stream goes down to update this gravel and cause it to fall, while the other goes through the gravel that fell to the output. It will only have water flow to the output if both of these inputs are true. One brought it down, the other goes through. The third gate is what I like to call blocking, but if you want to be technical, it is a nimply gate, a shortening of not imply. All this gate is, is one stream updating gravel so that it falls and blocks a lower stream. So now water can't go through here. We have to use this as the equivalent of a not gate because there's no way of automatically retracting water once it's already flown through an area. An important note with this though, is the timing is really important. So if this stream comes after the lower stream, the gravel will fall on top of the water and it can't block it, which means we need to pay attention to timing throughout the entire device. And that timing brings up a problem. Water doesn't always flow at a consistent rate in this version. If I unblock both these channels at the same time, you'll see that sometimes one channel will jump ahead of the other. So right now the left channel is one block ahead of the right. Now they're the same. It's infrequent, but still means there could always be a rare chance that one line jumps far enough ahead and doesn't get blocked when it should. To combat this, we need to make long tolerances so that even if a lower stream jumps several blocks ahead of the upper stream, it still gets blocked. There will always be a compromise between these tolerances versus speed and size. We'll make good tolerances that will make it very rare for any error to occur. Those are the three basic gates we'll use. Just with those, we have everything required for the calculator. However, there's one composite gate we'll use, which is made of all three of our gates. The exclusive OR, aka X OR gate, only outputs water if exactly one input has water. Both zero or both one inputs result in no output. The XOR gate can be made by blocking an OR gate with an AND gate. So here's the design for that. Both inputs are OR'd together right here and flow down through these channels to the lower stream. And this lower stream can be blocked by this gravel right here. But that gravel will only fall if this AND gate right here outputs. So that AND blocks the OR. I can showcase this. I'm going to showcase the case where both inputs are true. So we'll have both streams flowing with water, and it will be blocked. So there's the OR going down, AND gate, blocked. So no output when both inputs are true. And if you're wondering, the bends here that go left and then right, 
add the tolerance to make sure that this stream can be blocked. Still, for this to work, we need both inputs to come at the same time. And here's the case for a single input. You'll see the AND gate isn't triggered this time, which means the lower stream is never blocked. Those are all the gates we need. It's just a matter of chaining them together in the right order now to make the desired circuit. We'll be making an adding circuit. The circuit will input and output in binary. If you aren't aware, binary is just another way of representing numbers using two digits, 0 and 1, instead of our regular decimal system, which has 10 digits, 0 through 9. I'll put up translations between the two systems so everyone understands what the numbers are. And here's the design of all the gates put together. I built this in a testing world in a much later version, so it was easier to build because I could fly around. But the next step will be building this in our Minecraft world manually. I'm not going to be doing a full explanation of all the details of this calculator, but if you're interested, I'll have a world download in the description that will include labeled components so you can understand what's going on. And I've also put links to Matt Batwing's Logical Redstone series in the description, which has really great explanations of binary and binary addition. All I've done is put the gates in the right order to make the circuit for addition. I'll do a brief explanation of what's going on in general though. Right here is the input area where we put the two numbers we want to add together. The water flows through these channels and underneath right here we have OR gates and AND gates which either flow into or block these channels down here. And these channels result in the carry outs from each column. We also take those columns, add delay so they come into these sets of XOR gates at the same time, then delay them again so we can put them into a second set of XOR gates with those carries, and that gives us the final result. Hopefully I gave a good enough explanation right there. Let's build it in our world! After several days of building, we are on the finished calculator. It looks so incredible with these tubes everywhere, and so gigantic for classic. Over here is the input area. We input two binary numbers. This is where the first number goes, so we could do three. And then this is where the second binary goes. We could put in five. Now when we update this gravel, all these water channels are released at the exact same time, and it will add these two numbers together. So ready, set, go. So it all happens at once. We have the channels flowing down. That's where the carries are getting generated. We're going to move over here to see them get to the XORs. So this is the first set of XORs. Come in at the same time. This one got blocked. This one did not. That one did not as well. So those are the carries. They're coming. And they're going to come into these second XOR gates at the same time. Then we get the result. That one's blocked. That one's blocked. That one comes in. So we can see... 0, 0, 0, 1, that's 8. 3 plus 5 is 8. Let's run it again. Okay, this is the first input. We're going to put in 0, 0, 1, 1, which will be 3. Then over here, we'll put in 1, 1, 1, 0. So that's 14. So we'd expect an output of 17. Let's see if we get that. Boom. All right, they're all flowing down. I'm going to head towards the end so we can see what it's going to output. Here we can see the output is 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. 16 and 1, that's 17. Next we're going to input the highest possible values. 15 plus 15, which means we break all of these blockers here. This is the hardest possible input because the most XORs need to cancel. This should give us an output of 30. see we have one 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 zero that's 30. I'm so glad we have created a working calculator in classic Minecraft. Now onwards to the next version. We've just made a minor update to classic 0.0.19a underscore 06. 05 was an attempt to fixing a rubber banding issue and 06 was a partial fix to a system timer issue. 
I've experienced neither of those bugs, so those changes don't affect us. But while Notch was trying to fix those bugs, he removed the FPS limiter. So if I go up to our really high spawn point, where nothing is rendered, you can see our FPS had just gone past the previous limit of 100. Right now we're at 140s. So our adder still works fine in this version. I just wanted to build it prior to the update, so we created it in the first version possible. Let's switch to the server now, which has more changes. This is classic server 1.6, and we're in a different world because the humans in our worlds actually caused the server to crash. The server now automatically mutes any player who spams in chat. If I keep sending A right here, we get this message, too much chatter, muted for 8 seconds. And during that period, I cannot chat at all. This is not a setting, it is forced on by the server. I'm glad Mojang doesn't moderate server chat like this in modern versions. After a while, we get the you can now talk again message, and we can chat again. While testing with this server, I found an insane bug. Watch the top left corner when this world first loads. Did you see it? I'll rewind to the frames. What you might have seen when it first loaded was the FPS was 2,430,791. That is insane. We've never gotten the FPS counter that high. But what you almost certainly didn't see was for three hundredths of a second, before most chunks even loaded in, the FPS actually rose to 15,818,184. That exceeds our previous record of 2,864 FPS by over 5,000 times. This only happens right after joining a server, and it's ridiculous that it goes this high. The readme file was updated with version 1.5 and 1.6's changelogs. The instructions were moved to the top of the file, and a label for version 1.0 as the initial release was added. Finally, max connections was added to the server.properties. Its value gives the maximum number of connections allowed from the same IP. The minimum this value can be set to is 0, which prevents any player from joining at all. Also, if you go so far out of range, past the 32-bit signed integer limit, you'll get a server.properties is broken message. One of the largest and oldest structures in our world is this fractal called the Menger Sponge. We now have the sponge block. I think you know what has to happen. Ta-da! The Menger Sponge made of sponges! We actually built this on stream, and I think it turned out really well. The yellow adds some nice color to our otherwise mostly gray world. And all the holes in the sponges make it look like the pattern continues down, as it should into infinity. That's all for today's video. Thank you everyone for watching. Bye!